Catholic Church won't bless same-sex unions, quote, since God cannot bless sin. They go on to say that this does not imply a judgment on persons, but I want to know, do you think this sends a damaging message, and how do you feel about that, given that obviously you are now engaged and going to get married? Well, I think there are, listen, I respect people's right to believe in whatever they want to believe in their God. But if you believe in something that hurts another person that, or that does not give someone the same rights or freedoms, not necessarily under the Constitution because this is under God, uh, I, I think that that's wrong. We say it's not harming anybody. It's me in my bedroom. Well, the current debate about marriage explodes that myth. This is not private. This is pressing upon culture as a whole. Mm -hmm. And because they framed it in civil rights language, mm -hmm. it means that, it, it, this is a, the greatest farce ever. You can go ahead and practice your religion. This has nothing to do with you practicing your religion. If this is a civil rights issue, and if us not doing weddings for homosexuals or not hiring homosexuals becomes violating civil rights, then it is not conceivable that the church will be unharmed by this. Mm -hmm. So th that, that myth is exploded. This is not private, this is public. Don Lemon, a CNN news anchor, lashed out after the Catholic Church announced that homosexuality is a sin and that God does not bless sin. Lemon, who at the time was scheduled to marry his lover, another man, did not hold back in presenting his quote-unquote theological argument to prove that the Catholic Church, or any other church for that matter, is wrong on the issue of homosexuality and gay marriage. Please listen very carefully to Don Lemon's argument. And I think that the, the Catholic Church and many other churches really need to re-examine themselves and their teaching because that is not what God is about. God is not about hindering people or even judging people. Every unforgiven sin, every sin committed by every person who rejects Jesus Christ will be justly punished by God forever in a place called hell. I am not entirely sure which God Don Lemon was referring to. Still, I am confident that it is not the God of the Bible, because the Bible is clear about God judging people, nations, and the world. In the seventh chapter of the Bible, we read that God drowned the entire world except for eight people, Noah and his family, because of the rampant corruption of mankind. In the 19th chapter of the Bible, God reduced to ashes Sodom and Gomorrah for the very sin that Don Lemon is advocating for homosexuality. These are just two examples out of many that we have in scripture that speak of God's judgment on the world, on cities, on nations, and people. And to put it in the context of race, I find that, uh, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said the most segregated per place on earth, uh, time on earth, was 11 a.m. on a Sunday morning. Being homosexual is not the same thing as being black or being white or being whatever. It's not the same thing. It's not an immutable characteristic, and nobody has proven otherwise. There is zero, zero biological evidence that there is an immutable characteristic. If there was biological evidence, then you could prove that somebody was homosexual after they died. All you have to do is do an autopsy, you just do a postmortem, go into the brain and find that area in the brain that, that, that homosexuals have. Wait, wait, what, nothing in the brain? Okay, well, go into the genes and find that gene to, be, oh, wait, I think that's nothing in the genes? Well, uh, I heard about a pheromone study. You go into the pheromone, oh really? That was not, huh. There's absolutely nothing, nothing that proves that there is such a thing as a person who is a homosexual. There are people who practice homosexuality, but there is nothing in the world, nothing that demonstrates that there is a class or category of people who are immutably and unchangeably homosexuals, just like I'm immutably and unchangeably a black person. Witnessing people fighting and speaking out for a good cause is very interesting, inspiring, and worthy of commendation and honor. For instance, soldiers fighting for the freedom of their country is a hopeful sight for their nation to witness. On the other hand, some fight to be liberated from their moral obligations in order to practice their sin unashamedly. And they fight with every fiber of their being to live freely and openly in sin and demand others to fall in line lest you be canceled and persecuted. So I think that religion and the pew 
keeps us from actually, there are barriers from people actually getting to know each other. So I would say to the Pope and the Vatican and all Christians or Catholics or whomever, whatever religion you believe out, you, you happen to belong to out there, go out and meet people. God is the author of marriage, not man. Therefore, God is the one who defines marriage, not man. Therefore, man does not have the right to introduce the concept of same-sex marriage. Number one, because by definition, it's not marriage, it's another thing. And number two, because by definition, it goes against what was created in Genesis chapter two. There is so much comfort knowing that we have the very word of God and we can read it for ourselves to know what God has said as opposed to hearing Don Lemon's opinion about God. Try to understand people and do what the Bible and what, what Jesus actually said, if you believe in Jesus, and that is to love your fellow man and judge not lest ye be not judged. Jesus was there in Sodom and Gomorrah. He was raining down fire and brimstone. Jesus is the author of Leviticus. So you can't say that Jesus never addressed the issue of homosexuality unless you're going to argue that Jesus has a different opinion on the issue than the Father and the Spirit. This is hugely problematic because that would mean a breach in the Trinity and the whole universe would cave in on itself. So instead of having the pew hinder you, having the church hinder you, instead of being segregated in the church or among yourselves, go out and have a barbecue and meet people and start, um, and, and start breaking bread with people and getting to know them. The fact of the matter is we're in this world, although we're not of this world. The fact of the matter is the church is the pillar and the ground of the truth. Mm -hmm. And we don't take the truth and hide it under a bushel. Mm -hmm. That's not the church. We don't live these completely separate sort of bifurcated lives um, that we are the light of the world. We are the salt that preserves. And so it, it's just completely, it, it's unconceivable that we would not speak hmm. to this issue. Mm -hmm. Much as I do at Joy's house, mostly Sonny coming to my house, Sarah coming to my house, me going to Whoopi's house <laughs> for barbecues, and I, I'm telling the truth, and then hopefully I will be celebrating some sort of meal with Megan and Liberty at her house or at my house. So I, that's I what I think people should something. do more of. The other thing is that all legal decisions are based on principles and established precedent. And right now the principle is, you know, sort of the, the Beatles mentality. All you need is love. Uh -huh. Well, if that's the case, you, you, if marriage is based on popular opinion and who loves each other, the 50-year-old man and the 12-year-old boy, the man and his daughter, uh -huh. um, so on and so forth. And everybody say, oh, red herring. No, not once the principle is established. So this is not private right, right. and it doesn't stop here. So let's go back to the beginning. Then the man said, at last, this is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of men. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be drained to his wife and they shall become one flesh. That is marriage according to God. That is marriage according to Jesus Christ. That is marriage according to the Holy Scripture. When I first moved to this country as a Christian teenager, there was still a sense of morality, some type of a consensus. Most people believed certain truths and upheld them to a certain extent. I don't think that exists anymore. It's gone from our schools, our universities, and even so-called evangelical churches are now advocating for homosexual and transgender rights. That is why you have a group of people who find time on their TV shows to allow Don Lemon to lash out at Christians and educate them on what God is about and what God has said. Ironic, isn't it? Most of you uh, older people grew up in a time period in America when there was cultural Christianity. There was a kind of Christian consensus in America. People understood the church, they understood the Bible, they understood the gospel. They understood the morality that came out of the Bible. Sometimes it was called the Judeo-Christian ethic. It was, but even more, uh, it was a cultural kind of Christianity. If you grew up in the South, you probably, you probably joined a church, some church, because if you joined a church, you'd get a job at the bank. 
If you joined a church, uh, you could be hired somewhere because you were one of the good guys. If you joined a church, you connected with other people and you, you were socially acceptable and you were religious and you believed in God and that was good like the founders of America believed. They didn't believe in the God of the Bible, but they believed they couldn't keep people moral if there wasn't some divine threat. So they created a God of their own imagining uh, to hold over people's heads. And so there was a, a belief in God and it was defined primarily by the Bible. So there was a kind of cultural morality that survived a long time in America and it was showing up in, in elections 20 years ago, 15 years ago. There was still a consensus. Uh, we remember the, the moral majority, the religious right. They were still able to get people elected, still, still able to have some clout and some power. Let me tell you something. Gone. Gone. No more. There is no more cultural Christianity. There is no collective Christian consensus that is going to have any power in this country whatsoever. In fact, the more distinctly Christian we are, the more we will be labeled as extremists, bizarre, alien, homophobic, intolerant, guilty of hate crimes. Cultural Christianity is as we know it, that kind of consensus coming from a biblical understanding is gone. No matter what politicians and celebrities and Hollywood and the majority say or do, it will not change the Word of God on this issue. Our responsibility as Christians is to stand firm on the eternal and unchanging living Word of God and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ so that those who are in bondage to that sin may be delivered, may be justified, and may be washed of their sin. At this moment, I'd like to extend a friendly invitation to you to subscribe to our channel to get some more biblical content such as this one. Share this video with a friend and let me know what you guys think of Don Lemon's argument in the comment section. And I hope to see you in our next video with Love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ.